Hey guys, this is Gover Stats Lesson 2.3 Correlation. What are our learning targets? Learning target number one, estimate the correlation between two categorical variables from a scatter plot. So we're going to do some estimating. Number two, interpret the correlation. So this is the real world context. Again, this is where students are growing in this area, right? Math to some story. And number three, distinguish correlation from causation. All right, learning target number one. Estimate the correlation between two quantitative variables from a scatter plot. So what is correlation? It is abbreviated by the letter R, lowercase r, although the street definition of correlation applies to any two items that are related, such as gender, and political affiliation. Statisticians use this term only in the context of two numerical variables. The formal term for correlation is the correlation coefficient. Many different correlations measures have been created. The one we use in this class is called the Pearson. correlation coefficient. Number four, just like two distributions can have the same shape and center with different spreads, uh, two associations can have the same direction and form slash shape but very different uh, strengths. So let's go ahead and try a couple visuals that might help. Okay, so for example, let's talk about distributions. This is distributions. Let's just say you're doing a, a box plot. And the box plot looks um, it looks like the shape is the same. The center, right, in here looks like the same. But what about um, the only thing that's different is the spread, right? One's one's a little bit longer than the other. The min and the max. Okay, let's try the scatter plots. Example number one, and you have a bunch of these dots. Okay, same direction. You have the same form. In this case, the form is the shape just looks linear, right? But they have different strengths, different strengths. Right, these dots are kind of going in a direction that's linear, positive, but they have different strengths, okay? The measures strength and direction of a linear association and it does not um, assess um, the form or shape. Um, which one, which, number seven, which um, association um, is more linear? The one with an R value of 0.5 or one with R that is 0 0.90? Remember correlation, R, measures strength, not how linear it is. So this is a trick question. 
It's a star trick question. Correlation measures strength, not how linear. Although it's a linear association because we're using the x's and y's. All right, question number eight. Is correlation a resistant measure of strength? The answer is um, no. Adding or deleting outliers will influence R. So it, uh, another way of saying not resistant, which means it is resistant, it moves easily. Think of your friend or your family member, you offer them kind of like, I don't know, a candy. Maybe they're on a diet. Can they easily resist? Correlation cannot resist. A, B, an outlier in the pattern increases the R value. And C, an outlier outside the pattern moves R um, closer to uh, zero. Okay, all right, example number one. How would you describe the scatter plots with the given correlations? You have, um, oh, we didn't get a chance to uh, talk about the different values. Let's do that. So, sorry, this is going to be squished. You have some kind of number line here, and here is 1, negative 1, and 0. So, if you have an R value that's negative, it means it is a perfect uh, negative correlation. Right, you draw this, and perfectly say it's just a perfect line, those, those dots. So that is a negative. If it is zero, then there's no linear correlation. And so that's going to look like, I just can't tell. And then if it's a 1, this is a perfect, what, positive correlation. So let's go ahead and try these. Um, it just says yes or no. Is there a correlation? And is it positive or negative? And then it, if it's positive or negative correlation, is it weak, moderate, or strong? Okay. So let's look at this one. This one looks to be a positive. Are all those white dots close to that line? Okay, I would say very close, so I would say a strong positive correlation. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try this one on the bottom left here. From left to right, this one looks like it's going down, so it is a negative correlation. And are they very close to it? I would say a weak to moderate, moderate like medium. Okay, why don't you pause and you finish up the other four. This 
one in the middle, and we probably say moderate. It's okay, draw a line. Um, positive. Right? When you guys, when you think of positive and negative, also go back to like positive or negative slope that you learn back to linear equations. Okay, this one, you're not sure, right? Where is it going? Where, where can I draw this line? So I'm going to say this one is no correlation. This one looks like to have a strong negative. Okay, this one's interesting. Um, can we say there's a correlation? Not a trick question, but look look at the shape. Okay, they call these uh, curvilinear. <laughs> um, curve. C U R V A uh, linear relationship. And I would say that's moderate. So there's other different. Uh, we didn't. We don't say quadratic, um, but there's other ones that are, are that we'll learn. Log rhythmic or uh, exponentials as well. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, question number two a. Match each scatter plot with one of the four specified correlations. Okay. Why don't you guys go ahead and match those? Something you should notice is this for A, it's positive. So the only ones that are positive um, is um, this top left graph and the bottom right graph. But the other positive would be D, and that one's not very strong, right? Because it's closer to zero. So I'd probably say this one is D, and this one is A. Okay, which one has a weak negative? Weak negative. Find this one, right? You draw that green line. The dots, the data is pretty far away from it. So, and then uh, this one here in orange, we would probably say C, right? It's negative. You see the negative number, and um, it's pretty close to a line that you can estimate. Let's try these, okay? Go ahead and estimate, estimate, estim, estimate a R value for each of these. And then uh, go ahead and take like a minute to do that and then press play when you're finished. So A, remember going from left to right, this is a positive number and it's like basically a straight line. So I would say that this one is like R equals one. How about B? It's positive. I would probably say weak to moderate. So you could pick a number in between, 0.6. You said something like 0.7, um, but I would not say um, 0.1 or a positive one. Okay, so look at C. Um, can you put a line through it? Choice going? No, so we would say r equals zero, no correlation. This one looks like a pretty much straight line, so r equals negative negative one because um, it's basically a straight line, it's negative. It's a pretty strong negative, right? So r equals negative, I don't know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Okay, look at this one here. Although although it's close to a curve linear, okay, we're, we're again, we're trying to make this a linear association. So this one I would say r equals zero. Because uh, you're, you're, the data is super far away from the line. We'll get more detailed in lessons later, but I wanted you guys to try a couple of those. All right, let's move on to these problems here. And I call this Learning target number two, interpret the correlation. So example number three, we have lots of practice here. Draw a picture for quadrant one. So quadrant one, again, in your 
your um, coordinate plane is just this, right? I want you to focus there in quadrant one to help you visualize what's happening. Let me do a couple of these with you and then I'll do pause and try the rest of those. So if you want to go ahead and you can just press pause now, try them, and then I'll go over them as your answers, okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and draw some pictures. Explain whether a scatter plot for each of the pair of variables would probably show a positive, negative, or no correlation for the variables. So draw your axes, okay? The number of cars on a freeway. Number of cars on the freeway. And the amount of time for a commute. So commute time. Or a commute. And it gives us a hint as one variable increases, does the other also increase? So, number of cars, so let's just say, I don't know, one, two, three, I don't know, billion cars. And what would you expect if there's a bunch of cars on the road? Well, if there's a lot more cars on the road, that means it takes you a longer amount of time. So, as I go in this direction, what happens to my dots? Well, I would expect the dots to be going up because there's there's more cars, right? If you've ever been on the freeways, more cars means you're gonna spend more time in the car. So what kind of correlation do I have there? I have a, a positive. Okay, let's try number two. Person's weight and the number of siblings they have. Um, so if my weight goes up, 0, 50, 100, 150 pounds, does that mean you have more siblings? One, two, three, or does that mean the number of siblings goes down as you get heavier? Or it doesn't really matter, right? I would say it doesn't matter, so you have no correlation. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and try some more. Question number three, explain whether a scatter plot for each pair of variables would probably show a positive, negative, or no correlation with the variables. The number of extracurricular activities, so the number of activities, again, just put some numbers to it, this helps me, one, two, three, okay, like Halloween, Halloween's coming up, and then the amount of free time, free time, so if I do a bunch of the activities, what would happen to my my free time? Let's just say if you went to all the school dances and all your football games, right? You keep doing more and more. What would happen as you go in this direction? Well, you would expect your free time to go nosedive, right? You're in band. Um, you don't have time to do your homework. It's very precious. Or you're working like 20 hours. Does that make sense? Um, so that would be a... Uh, the time a student's homework will take and the weight of their backpack. Okay. Time on homework. You gotta think old school on this one. So one hour, two hours, three hours, and then weight of backpack. Weight. One, two, three pounds. So what would you expect if I, um, it, it's just again hard because you guys are in the digital age and but let's pretend you're back in my day where um, I don't know you, you signed up for AP US history right and I would spend an hour two hours each day on that so as I go in this direction um, you know you would have to take more and more books home does that make sense because you needed to do your homework out of the book so I would expect more Little homework means you take less home, right? But if you have a lot of homework, 
you have to, I don't know, open up your APUS history book. So that would, relationship would be positive. And then the amount of, of time concert tickets are on sale and the number of tickets left. So amount of time on sale. So one, two, three hours, and then the number of tickets left. Okay. Let's just think, you know, Lakers just won finals. And do you think those tickets are gonna be on you know, after one, two, three hours, what's gonna happen as you go as time increases? Well, I think the number of tickets, let's just say this is just what's gonna happen? Well the tickets gonna get sold, so like there's only three tickets left after I would expect it to go down. Because, you know, again, think of the concert you would want to go to, like, I don't know, some musical band or, you know, sporting event. So if as time goes on, what's happening? Well, the tickets that are left is going to go down until they're sold out, right? So this would be a negative uh, correlation. Right. Number six, tell whether a line of fit should um, be drawn for each set of data graphed. No. Um, it doesn't look like there's any relation here. Uh, yes. And then number eight. Yeah, I would still I would still say yes for number eight. Number nine, what type of correlation is there between the number of hours spent talking long distance? Talking. And you know those units really help if you think about it. It kind of puts it in context, right? So if you're talking again, one, two three hours with your significant other. Okay, and the amount um, of the telephone bill. Again, you guys have to kind of think old school, like, you know, right now we have unlimited talk time or something like that. But let's just say, back in my days, it, it costs like 10 cents a minute. I know. I know, I know, I know. It, you actually had to pay per minute. So what would happen if you talk little? Well, you pay little. But if you talk a lot, you pay a lot. So what do you have there? Uh, you have a positive correlation, which would have been A. So the hard part is context change. Um, hopefully I'll try to make it clear the ones that are universally been over, over time. All right, page three. Describe and interpret the correlation uh, shown by each scatter plot. Okay, so here... Um, we have something that is really old called CDs. Those were these circle things that you put into the disc. I have those. And cassettes are super old and look like that. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you guys, but they're super old. And cassettes are older and CDs were newer. So what's happening um, with the first one? So what happens as CDs sold increase? Let's write that. As CDs sold increase, cassettes, what happens to cassettes? So again, I like to draw this line going from left to right, and then what's happening to those dots? Cassettes uh, sold decrease and and that kind of that kind of makes sense right as the newer technology let's write that the, the newer one increases well people are not going to buy cassettes anymore so we have here some kind of um, negative correlation Okay, and take a look at this one. What happens as CDs sold increase? As CDs sold increased, what happens again? 
as you go from left to right, what's happening on the other one. Uh, CD players. Sold also increase. And we would say that there is a positive correlation. Again, why? Because you, you you took these discs, look kind of like records, and then you put it into this, this the CD player, and that's how your music would work. I think I might still have mine. Number five, multiple choice, in a study of relationship between self concept and achievement. So let's write self-concept and achievement. A correlation of 0.75 was found. This indicates the relationship between the two are. So 0.75 is positive. And what's happening is the data is pretty close to that. What would you interpret 0.75 as? Um, is it closer to zero or one? So it's closer to one, so it's not weak. It's definitely strong, and we said that this was positive, so um, your answer is strong and positive. All right. Let's go down here. Distinguish correlation from causation. So again, what is our um, what is R? R is correlation. And we would say that correlation does not imply causation. It doesn't mean it causes something. Correlation does not change if X and Y are switch, and correlation, correlation uh, does not imply causation. Both variables must be quantitative. Don't be tricked on that. It's gotta be both numerical numbers. And correlation does not imply causation. Can you read what I just wrote in all those colors? Correlation does not imply causation. Just because it has a strong correlation doesn't mean one causes the other. And um, I'll prove that to you with a lot of real life examples, but let's finish this. So a scatter plot, scatter plots, correlation coefficients, and regression models never prove causation. This is, for example, partly why it took so long for the government to require warning labels on cigarettes. Although there was plenty of evidence that increased smoking was associated. In other words, associate, like, you know, if you have a, I know it's an old word, but you, you might be associated with so-and-so friends. I'm going to put right, related. With increased levels of lung cancer, it took years to provide evidence. Oops, evidence. That smoking actually causes lung cancer. And the tobacco companies use this to their great advantage. All right, let's move on to page. What do we got? Page. Sorry, that, this is page four. Example number six, X cause Y. Determine if the following situations represent positive, negative, or no correlation. If there's a correlation, is there a causation? Does X cause Y? Okay, again, if you need, need some graphs, that might help. So 6A, I just like to draw a graph, okay? Our study 
and then the amount of sleep. Okay, so let's think about this. If you study more, if, you keep, if you're going from left to right, if you're studying, um, what happens to your sleep? Well, if you go to college, you know, a lot of times, you know, for finals or midterms, you're studying so much, just like in high school too, that you lose sleep. So if I'm going to not study like zero, then I have lots of time to sleep. But you should know is that there is a uh, negative correlation. And for um, negative. Okay. Does studying... Okay, here's the next question. Here's the hard part. Does studying cause you to sleep less? The answer is no. Um, eh, you can argue either way, right? Um, that's assuming that these are the only two options. Um, so you can argue this one both ways, but you know, typically what they say is, well, if, if, the, if you're the awesome student and the only thing you're doing is either um, studying or sleeping, and if those are only two, then yes. When you spend more time studying, then you um, decrease on uh, sleeping. All right, let's try this one, 6B. The distance you drive, so let's just say you drive 100 miles, and the amount of gas left, so like three gallons, two gallons, one gallon. What's happening as you drive little, you use little, and if you drive far, you drive more. So you have a what? Oh, sorry, I'll take that back. Gas left. So if you drive little, then you have a lot of gas, but then if you use drive further, your, your gas that's left is going down, so that would be a negative. Does how far you drive impact how much gas is left in your tank? Yes, it does, because your car uses it. Okay. The temperature and the number of cups of hot chocolate. Okay, this is the temperature. Maybe like 90 degrees and zero degrees. And cups of hot chocolate sold. So five, I don't know. Zero. What's happening? Can you say that the lower temperature means more cups sold, and higher temperature means that um, I don't know. Do you want hot chocolate when it's hot? If it's ninety degrees, then I'm sure not going to buy that. So I would say no. Is there a causation? Yeah. If it is cold, then affects or causes people to drink more hot chocolate and it's hot it causes people not to drink it so we can say um, a causation there sixty the number of tickets you buy and the total cost so that's like three tickets and this cost is five million dollars and that's zero I buy one ticket and I keep buying more tickets for my family and it's going to cost a lot so that would be a uh, positive does the number of tickets cause the total cost yes because you buy more tickets it causes your total cost to increase 6e the number of stairs you climb and the number of heartbeats so if you have again three staircases and this is your heartbeat maybe uh, I don't know fifth I don't know what the numbers are. 50 beats, 200 beats. I know when I go upstairs, they go up. All right, so positive um, correlation. Does the number of stairs cause my number of heartbeats? Number of stairs climbed? Yes, it does. And the last one. Time spent studying. So again, you study three hours, two hours, one hour, and then the football score. Um, do they have any correlation? Mm, no correlation. And does number of hours study cause uh, the football score to go up or down? Uh, no, it does not. So I would say no. 
All right, let's continue um, learning how to interpret the correlation. Example seven, chocolate. If I eat more chocolate, will I win a Nobel Prize? Nobel Prize, again, is something for very famous scientists in the work. Most people love chocolate for its great taste, but does it also make you smart? Scatterplot like this one recently appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine, a very prestigious uh, journal, medical journal. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be there. The explanatory variable is a chocolate consumed per person in sample countries. So again, ex explanatory is the X over here. And the response variable is the number of Nobel Prizes for 10 million residents of that country. So that's the Y, right? And they graphed it. Okay, so what does a correlation of 0.791? Think in your head. So the correlation of 0 0.791 indicates, remember, what does R talk about? It talks about the what? Linear relationship. What's the x and the y? Relationship between chocolate consumed, that's my x, and my y, which is the number of Nobel Peace. Nobel Prize um, per a 10 million residents of, remember, don't agree on the picture test, works, of that country. Okay. So we kind of talked about um, this one before. But we, we're kind of you're measuring its strength. So how strong is it in its direction? Kind of like, and we learned with the previous lesson, uh, suns, right? Shape, anything unusual, the direction, um, and the strength. So that's what the, the, the R is. So is it positive or negative? It is a positive. This graph, right? Positive. Okay, now they've told you based on what you look at, it tells you the R value. We set the R value as 0.791, so we would say that you can say, I would say a 0.89 or 1 is, is strong, so I would say moderately uh, moderately strong. If the people in the United States started eating more chocolate, just pass out chocolate to kids. Um, can we expect more Nobel Prizes to be awarded to the residents of the United States? Okay. This word expect, we can just even, remember what's the key word? Cause or causation. Does chocolate cause more Nobel Peace Prize? Uh, the answer is what? No. Even though... There is a what? What do we say up there? There is a there is a strong correlation between chocolate uh, consumption. That's the X. And what's the Y? Nobel. Uh, Nobel Prizes per 10 million um, comma one does not cause the other.
it's possible that both these variables are changing due to another variable. It's possible both are changing to a different, so not the explanatory variable, but the other variable that I want you to consider would be money, right? So let's say, you know, you have lots of money, you can buy expensive things like expensive chocolates. And if you have lots of money, you might have more greater education. Greater education is going to lead you to greater science achievements. Okay? All right. What does Switzerland have on the correlation? So we'll find Switzerland. Okay, Switzerland is right there. And they're saying Switzerland consumes lots of chocolate. Okay, you're going far on the x-axis and you're going far up the y-axis, which means they have a lot of Nobel Prizes. What, what does that do? Well, when Switzerland is included, It makes the association, what would we use as a word, stronger, weaker, stronger, because it's going to move it closer to, um, to one. To make it closer. Um, correlation makes association stronger uh, makes association stronger to make it closer to a correlation of one why because it's in line right that's a perfect now Sweden Sweden is kind of pulling is playing the numbers away from one, right? 0 0.9, 0 0.8, something like that. Okay. All right. Why don't you guys try this next page? You guys try all those examples below, and then uh, we'll go over those. All right. Last page. From the information, uh, determine if the correlation is positive, negative, or none. Okay. So here, you just got to be very careful. Um, because you, you just need to pay attention to the graphs. Okay, normally graphs do what? You would expect a graph. Um, look at the x-axis about pirates here. Okay, so determine if the correlation is positive, negative, or not. Okay, this is a hard one because you think it's positive. The answer is no because the numbers are switched. Do you see that? They're kind of all over the place. So if we redid it, number of pirates, right? If I did something like the numbers there, you know, zero to um, 50,000, and you had, and then the global temperature, I don't know what 16 and a half degrees Celsius is, and 13, so now I'm switching it, because it should be increasing, right? So if you had like 17 pirates, then you had high temperature, and they're saying as the number of pirates decreases, or in our case, we have like, say, just graph it, 17, 2000, 17, um, and then you have um, 400 pirates and 16. Yeah, you're going to have something like this. So what's our answer? What does that look like? That's a negative correlation. What is what is this? What does this look like? Um, even if it's backwards, but again, that's why it's hard. I'd say the R value is almost like point negative point nine. 
this one, put it right there. And is there a causation? Do pirates cause global warming? No, pirates don't. Cause global warming. Okay, let's try another one. History teacher asked her students how many hours of sleep they had the night before a test. The data shows the number of hours the students slept. See that on the x-axis and their scores on the exam. This graph is a scatter plot from the given data. Okay, so what can we what can we what can we say about our data? Going left to right it is going up, so we can say that it is positive. Okay, what what kind of correlation would you give it? Is it a perfect on the line? No. So I want to know. 0.8, Okay, so is there a causation? Does um, possibly maybe you sleep a lot and you're not stressed? Um, so it's a possible. Would this information affect your behavior the night before tests? Yes, you would probably what? Sleep more. Assuming maybe you're the type of student, like you did all your homework before the due date, and then on the due date, the night before it's due, you don't have to like stress and do all that work because you can sleep because you finished it. Okay, here's the next one. The following chart shows violent crimes compared to high school graduations for all 50 states. So the graduation rates there on the x-axis and then violent crimes. Determine if the correlation is uh, positive, negative, or not. Okay, I think it's negative, it's going down. Is that pretty close to the data? I think it's pretty weak. It's pretty far off. So, um, I don't know. The answer has a negative 0.7. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty weak um, one, but in this illustration of cause and effect, are the two variables simply correlated? Uh, you can argue here, this is your English class. Um, I think you need further, uh, further study needed. You really need to study, just like and in stats, you can never have have enough data, more data. All right? I don't want just the states. I want, I want all the counties. And I want what I want is I want like a billion dots because that's really what a line is. It has all those dots on there. Okay. Okay. Press pause and once you guys try um, number number nine here, and then we'll go over it. Okay, again, you might want to just draw a picture. Uh, when you are on a diet, the less calories you eat daily versus the more weight you lose. Um, and here is the, the causation statement. Therefore, eating less calories makes you lose weight. So what's happening here? Okay, again, let's say you want to eat that cookie. I want to eat that cookie, a thousand calories. And then here is my body weight, 200 pounds to zero. Okay, so if I don't eat the cookie, um, I have a lower weight. But if I eat the cookie, oh, sorry. This one says weight you lose. That is important. So again, if I put some numbers here, let's say I lose um, 100 pounds. So if I eat the cookie, will I lose 100 pounds? Yes. But if I start eating lots of cookies, will I lose 100 pounds? No, I'll lose like zero. 
Does that make sense? So going in this way, so we'll say negative and the causation statement. Therefore, eating less calories will make you lose weight. Yes, because if I don't eat any food, then I am not going to gain weight. So if I consume less calories, then I'll weigh less. So we'll say that statement is true. All right, is this making you hungry? The more ice cream consumed on the beach, ice cream, versus the number of people going into the water. People in the water. Um, okay, so let's think about this. Remember, the context is the beach. So if if a lot of people are eating ice cream on the beach, most people don't want to eat it if it's cold, like in the winter and it's really cold, but so I'll eat a lot of ice cream if it's hot. And if it's hot, then I think a lot of people would want to go to the beach, right? Think of the summers, right? Think of when I worked at Jamba Juice, when it was hot in the summer, a lot of people um, were coming in to get smoothies, and I'm sure a lot of people were going to the beach, right? So that would be a positive. Okay, here is next statement, the causation statement. We're going to figure out if this is true or false. Therefore, eating more ice cream on the beach makes people go into the water. It doesn't make them, it doesn't increase one or the other, so I would say that is false. The x does not cause the y or y does not cause the x, okay? Number six. The more people in a family versus the increased number of cars the family owns. Okay, so you guys know I have five kids. Um, so the number of people, one, ten people, and then number of cars. Well, eventually they're going to grow up, and I'm sure my kids would love to get their own jobs, right? So, yeah, I think if you had one person, you only need like one car, but then if you have more people, you can have more cars. And most of the time, you're not like a celebrity, right? So I think that is positive. Therefore, the more people there are in a car determines um, determines how many how many cars a family owns. I think that's false. And here's a couple examples. Um, maybe your family who can't afford it. So you maybe you have ten people in your family, and um, you can automatically have own more cars. Maybe you have to maybe. You, the family decides they live in a big city and you don't need to drive a car or save the money for college. Or you could be a celebrity like uh, Jerry, um, what's that guy called uh, on Seinfeld? Jerry Seinfeld? Is that him? I don't know. And he owns a lot of Porsches. So one person owns a lot of cars. So just because he's a small family, but yet he has a lot. So that's why I would say it's false. Okay, let's go down to uh, this one speed the average speed cars travel from Philadelphia to New York on the turnpike the turnpike is just uh, a freeway so average speed so I'm thinking like you know think of 75 50 25 and then um, the, the average amount of time it takes. So time, hours, right? Put some units to it. Okay, so this is kind of like the traffic one. If, if I'm flying through at 75 miles per hour, it's pretty fast, and I don't have to spend, the distance is gonna go a lot faster, right? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time getting there. But if it's like a crawl, like you guys know, stop and go traffic, it's going to take me a huge amount of time. So what do you guys notice there? You have a uh, negative uh, correlation here. Okay. Therefore, car speeds travel from Philadelphia to, to New York determines the time it takes between them. That is true. If you go faster, it's going to spend less time. And the last one. Um, 
how much you pay for a house. Let's say one million. And versus how much you pay for a car. And let's say a hundred thousand. Therefore, the more you pay for a house makes you spend more on a car. Okay, so let's just say, you know, you have a lot of money and you can spend a million dollars on a house. Does that mean you're going to buy an expensive car? Maybe. But let's just say, you know, uh, you're, so, you're, so, you're so rich, um, but you live in New York City. And houses cost a lot and you don't want to own a car. You just take the subway. Okay, or let's just say you you don't care about a house. You live in um, in a luxury condo or an apartment. Well, reverse. Maybe you 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 don't want to spend a lot of money on your housing, but you'd rather drive a really nice Tesla. So the numbers can be all over the place for this one. So I would say, is there any correlation? The answer, the answer is none. Does one affect the other? The more you pay for a house makes you spend more on a car. Um, I would say false, right? You can do those either extremes, right? Maybe you want to spend little money on a car, um, but you want to spend a lot of money on a house or the other way around. So one does not necessarily cause the other. Okay? Well, that was helpful. See you guys.